you shouldn't stop at 10%. 10% is just the foundation. We present to you false preachers caught doing insane things in the church, such as dragging a boy in chains around the stage, choking a woman for disrupting the church session, and employing gimmicks to guilt people into tithing, and many more. Make sure to keep watching till the end. Try to get away from me. Mm -mm. I might be old, but I lift, bro. You chained to grace. Many modern day preachers are working really hard to make the Church of God, particularly the preaching of the gospel, as entertaining and fun as possible. Let's make an important point. There's nothing necessarily wrong with using illustrations to make your points. After all, when you read the gospel, Jesus would often point to things around him to describe his message. Today, many false preachers entertain their audience while depriving them of biblical truth. I come at you with a choice, but I got you. So now you're not 14 anymore, you're 18. I thought that's who I was, and I became ashamed, and I'm just dragging you. We took time to watch Stephen Furtick's sermon about choosing your chain. While in principle the message was not theologically unsound, he demonstrated how one could be chained by bad decisions they made when they were young. Yet, the ramifications can continue for long, even if they try to break free. Conversely, one can choose to be chained to grace. Unfortunately, entire theatrical displays and motivational speeches that are not deeply based on the Word of God may excite people's emotions and make them either feel good or convicted, but without true biblical teaching, there are rarely tangible fruits. Here is another insanity in the church that makes Christianity look really bad in the eyes of the world. Ever you do not tithe, it's like you are robbing your father. Can you imagine yourself robbing your ground. father? Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Yo, D, D, tie his hands up. Tie his hands up. Hey, man, check his pockets. Run his pockets, man. What you, what you got? What you got? Pastor K. Francis Smith is the lead pastor of Excel Church Worldwide. During one of his sermons on tithing, he had a gun pointed at him while he taught that not tithing or giving 10% of your income is equivalent to robbing God. The whole idea of robbing God comes from Malachi 3. Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3, verses 8 to 10. You robbed God who gave you life, who provided for you, gave you opportunities, and you tie his hands so that he can't do anything that he desires to do for you. Son, I had a plan for your life. Son, I've provided for you. I had a plan. Why would you rob me of all the people he could have robbed? Why would you rob your father? Why would you rob the one who woke you up this morning, who started you on your way, and you tie the very hands of God, and now God's hands are tied? You got what you think you wanted, but what good is it without your father? What good is it without the one who designed you and created you? God did not create you to be a robber. God did not create you to be a thief. God created you to be blessed. 
Different interpretations of these texts and tithing exist, but we believe Christians should support their local churches through regular giving. Furthermore, no one should ever give under coercion or pressure. Christians ought to give abundantly. If you decide to give 10% or more of your income, do so generously. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 to 7. And what God says, when you tithe, what I want to do is I want to put something on you. I want to pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. But when you stop tithing and you feel like you got a full cup because God has blessed you just a little bit, what you do is you stop the flow of God in your life. And by the time you turn around, you done emptied out that little bit that God gave you. And then you want to come back to God, talking about God, fill my cup. And God said, but wait a minute. What you did was you stopped the flow. I can't do what I want to do with you because you've tied my hands and you've taken away my opportunity to bless you. But when you get ready to tithe and you start offering to God, God says, what I want to do is I want to pour you out a blessing that you don't even have room enough to receive. That's somebody say overflow. Claiming that God is not moving in your life because you're not tithing is unbiblical. That sounds more like the prosperity gospel. No fire to defeat your enemies. And no fire for mega money. Mega testimony. One, two, three. The following false preacher, who was caught doing insane things in the church, goes by Apostle Amos Isa. Just like the fake boxing prophet Samuel Kakande, which we covered in this video, Amos Isa seems to possess some power so strong that merely moving his hands or legs causes people to fall. Interestingly, this false apostle received a prophecy from another false apostle, Johnson Suleiman, who hangs out with the notorious Zimbabwe preacher Hubert Angel, a friend of Benny Hinn, who was arrested in a money laundering scheme and gold smuggling. Johnson prophesied that Amos's wife poisoned him. While I was in the vehicle and I was being driven here, mommy came here before me. Dr. Lizzie was here before me. While I stayed back, I stepped into the vehicle. While I was being driven here, the Lord took me. He said, son, there is a pastor from Guagualada that the wife wants to kill him. He said his last name is Isa. That the wife poisoned him and wants to kill him. Is it you? Your wife poisoned you. <laughs> eh? I am here. Your wife poisoned you. Yes, that is. Come this way. Stand up. Listen. Listen. An instruction was given to me by heaven. I saw that when I sat in the vehicle. The Lord said to me, as I speak to you, both of you are not together now. Yes, and the Lord said to me clearly, this, you survived. How can anyone call this insanity Christianity? It is shameful what these people do in the name of Jesus. Their judgment awaits them if they do not repent and stop mocking God and deceiving people. Five to ten minutes into preaching Sunday morning on Remsen Avenue in Canarsie, Bishop Lamar Whitehead saw the door in the back of the room kick open. How many of you have lost your faith because you saw somebody else die? What you about to go through? Yo, yo, all right, right, right. 
You might recall several months ago when Brooklyn, New York, Bling Bishop Lamore Whitehead and his wife were robbed of around $1 million in jewelry during a live-streamed service. While no one should ever go through such a traumatic experience, one can't help but wonder why a so-called man of God wore such expensive jewelry. It's pretty remarkable how this gentleman in black remained calm during the entire ordeal. Interestingly, Bishop Lamore was caught on camera choking a woman who interrupted him during the church service. Now let's give Jesus a round of applause. Why they take pictures and they want to be on social media. Take the pictures. 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 Now, now go over here, okay? Now go over here, go over here. Grab her, grab her out. Grab her out. Now you're gonna grab, grab her out. Grab her out. Grab her out. Grab her out. Get downstairs. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. Press whatever charge you want. You're not gonna come in my space. I feel threatened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the spirit, y'all. Glory to God. Now remove her out of here. Now move her out of here. Move her out of here. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a round of applause, y'all. This is what the security footage showed. You can see Lamore literally pushing the lady out of his church violently. The police arrested both the preacher and the lady. However, Bishop Lamore was released with no charges pressed against him, but the woman was charged with misdemeanor crimes. Indeed, Mr. Whitehead's behavior is not Christ-like, but disrupting a gathering is equally wrong. And here's another pastor using props, just like Stephen Furtick, and gimmicks to persuade people to tithe. Time to give! What my purse is, let me see. How much I got? Did you show up at the restaurant like that? No, you went online, looked at the menu and said, $45, $50, let me carry the fine. You prepared to eat well. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I come to the house of God, I prepare to eat well. I know that he's about to give me revelation and wisdom. I'm gonna prepare, but you still, what if I told you that the tithe was training wheels? The tithe was never meant to be God's highest expression of generosity. The tithe was never meant for new believers to use as an excuse to give marginally. He just wanted the tithe to be... He just wanted it to be training wheels. It's there to teach you how to give. It'll be hard for this preacher to justify his claims biblically. Tithing is not a training wheel to prepare believers for the next level. In other words, he's guilting people not to stop at 10%, but rather give more because the more you give, according to the prosperity gospel, the more God blesses you. Not to limit how much you give. You shouldn't stop at 10%. 10% is just the foundation. It's just training wheel. Now, let me ask you a question. How old you is still riding training wheel? No, come on, y'all. How old are you? This is the doctrine of demons. No one should be forced to give. If only these wolves in sheep's clothing concentrated on preaching the unadulterated word of God, the Holy Spirit would impress in people's hearts to financially support the preaching of the gospel. <laughs> Go, 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 go where? Hitting a demon-possessed person with the Bible or showing her a crucifix is not biblical. Jesus! You demon! Come here! Jesus' name! Come here! In Jesus' name! The mighty name of Jesus! The mighty name of Jesus! Jesus' name! The rope of the Holy Ghost! Come! Jesus' name! Come face your judgment! Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share.
God bless you. This is one of the biggest problems with deliverance ministries. They question demons and use tactics like Bibles, crosses, olive oil, and holy water to cast demons out of people. Demon-possessed people need the gospel, and they need to confess and repent of their sins to be set free. Yelling at demons, sprinkling oil or water, or hitting people with Bibles won't do a thing for a demon-possessed person. Seeing the name of Jesus and Christianity dragged into the mud grieves us. We challenge every believer in Jesus Christ to lovingly, passionately, and courageously proclaim biblical truth and warn people to come out of false religious systems that have the form of godliness but deny the power thereof, according to 2 Timothy 3, verse 5. God's judgment is coming, and it is coming soon, and every false teacher and their duped followers must repent. Turn to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. 